Hello everyone and welcome back to Clover Nose Pets. I'm Clover and today we are going to be continuing the Parrot Chop recipe series with another chop mix today. We are going to be using a lot of foraged veggies or well, leafy greens. If you don't know what chop is, basically it is a mixture of freshly chopped fruits and mostly vegetables that you give to parrots and other birds. For parrots, it should be at least 80% of their diet, and other birds, such as canaries, finches, chickens, quail, that sort of thing, ducks, it should make up around 20% of their diet. If you want to know more about CHOP, please go check out my video on my channel about what CHOP actually is, where I go more in depth on why it's so important to be feeding. Without further ado, let's get started. The ingredients for this mix are going to be dandelion greens, clovers, creeping charlie stalks with flowers, and dandelion heads. Moving along to the non-forged foods, we've got cauliflower, carrot, brussels sprouts, bell peppers, broccoli, and turnip greens. We will also be adding dry ingredients, but since those aren't mandatory, they'll be listed off late later. Anyways, quick disclaimer. Before we start, quick disclaimer. With any foraged food, it is important to make sure that you are not only harvesting them sustainably and from a plentiful source, but also that the area you are taking them from is legal and also that it has no pesticides or other chemicals that could cause harm to your birds. It's also important for things like flowering plants, such as the dandelions, especially towards the start of spring, that you are making sure you are not picking too many, and the ones you do pick are from plentiful sources and do not go to waste. As for things like indie lion greens, you don't want to be picking off full plants, but instead one or two leaves per plant, once again from a plentiful source. That way you are not killing the plant, but instead just taking a few of the leaves. And of course this also goes for the Creeping Charlie, and the clover. Anyways, let's get started. First of all, the clovers. These are actually good as is, so you don't really have to do anything with them other than set them in the bowl. As for your dandelion greens and creeping charlie stalks, you can actually chop these together. Just gonna bunch them up like that and chop as is. Of course, different birds are going to have different preferences for size. But generally, having it about an inch thick will work just fine. There we go. Set these in the bowl and move on. For the turnip greens, we're just going to fold it like that and chop it the same way. But since turnip greens tend to be a little rougher, I am going to actually chop it again this way. Set them in the bowl and we can move on. On to the bell peppers. For bell peppers, what you're going to do is you're going to take the skinnier side, slice it in half, and lay them down like that. Then you are going to take them and cut them into strips. My knife is incredibly dull, so this is a little harder, um, but yeah, just like that. Alright, now that I've got all of these done, just going to set them in a pile like this and chop that way. All right, moving on to the broccoli. Now broccoli is probably the easiest of all of this. First of all, you're just going to cut from the head down and then once it gets to the base, you can either put this into a compost bin or just chop it up finer. Broccoli is a great starter veggie for a lot of unexperienced birds who just aren't used to eating veggies yet, as it is very seed-like, seeing that it is a flower, and works really well. 
If your bird does like larger pieces and doesn't want to eat fine stuff like this, chopping it this way also works so that you have chunks like this. This is also great, great foraging. Moving on to cauliflower. For this, you're going to do about the same thing. There's a little bit of rotten stuff on the tip here. I am just going to take this off. You don't have to, and it is still perfectly fine to eat, but since I do have both a compost bin and I have feeder insects for my reptiles that will eat this sort of thing, I figured I might as well. For broccoli, you're basically going to do the same thing to start off. And then once it's chopped enough like this, you're going to do the exact same thing again, long ways. Next up is Brussels sprouts. First of all, we're going to chop off those ends. Highly recommend you toss these outside or into a compost bin or something like that, instead of just throwing them away. Once you've got them like this, you're just going to chop it from top to bottom, just like that. Once you've got them all chopped up like that, uh, you don't have to do this step if your bird likes larger pieces, but since mine are smaller birds, I have budgies and cockatiels along with a tannenbar corella or goffin's cockatoo, but my birds like smaller pieces, so I'm also going to chop it like that. Since these are all actually individual little rings here, this will cause it to separate and you'll have a bunch of small pieces. Once it's chopped fine enough for your birds, you can set it in the bowl with the rest. Next up we've got carrot. I generally like to just use a grater and grate up my carrot for my birds with the fine setting, but for the sake of this video I will chop it normally. First of all, we're just going to chop off that end. Then we're going to chop this thicker bit into strips. Hard to do with a dull knife. And then we're going to put it sideways and do the same thing. By then you should have a grid-like design, and then you can chop like normal. Like I said, my birds do like it chopped even finer than this. Since they have such small beaks, it's hard for them to eat stuff this big, so I'm going to chop it more. Just like that. Then, last but not least, we have the dandelion heads or dandelion flowers. For these, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to chop off the top bit, and then chop once more, and that's it. Just going to repeat that for every single one of these. Chop off the top, chop once more, and that's it. There we go. Add this to the bowl with the rest, and we can move on to dry ingredients. Alright, here's the bowl. Real quick, I'm just going to mix it up. There we go, it's all mixed up. Excuse the ringing in the background. Crackers, the Goffin's cockatoo, is wanting attention, so he's ringing his bell. Anyways, moving on to the dry ingredients. First one is going to be French lentils. One of the best reasons to add dry ingredients to your chop mix is because they will soak up all of the extra vegetable juice that sits on the bottom of the bowl or container or whatever. And once they've soaked up all of that nutrients, your birds can eat them and the birds will still be getting the nutrients. Unlike what a lot of people do where they will just drain all of the vegetable juices down the sink and that is just taking away from a lot of the nutritional value that you can be giving to your birds, which is why adding dry ingredients is so nice. Next up is non-cultivated wild rice, then cardamom seeds. Then there's this stuff, this is called Nature's Salad. It is a mixture of ingredients made by a brand called Rosewood Naturals. Add that in. Next we've got elderberries, dried elderberries to be exact. Followed by Shelby's Calming Seed Mix. This is a mixture of seeds, I'll just read them off for you real quick. Brown linseed, hemp seed, pumpkin seed, milk thistle seed, black sesame seed, white sesame seed, sunflower seed, 
chia seed, golden flaxseed, nigella seed, brown mustard seed, blue poppy seed, caraway seed, melon seed, amaranth husk, and lavender. This is from a shop called Mikey and Mia, and it is a UK-based brand, but they do ship to the US, which is why I love them so much. And they actually make a lot of absolutely amazing er, uh, parrot food. Go check them out. Yeah. Then we've got rainbow quinoa. And last but not least, bee pollen. Let's mix it up. Now that the mix is all done, let's go feed some to the birds. Birds, veggies! <laughs> Are you checking that out, Eclipse? Yummies? Yeah. Also give some to crackers. His cage door is also always open, but he tends to be a little more skittish since he's a newer bird, and therefore it tends to eat inside of the cage. But yeah, I'd really like it.